This is a DIY crystal radio. They were very popular in the 1920s. They require no external power to operate, no batteries, no power, nothing. They operate strictly on the radio waves that are coming in. So if you're looking for something, uh, an emergency radio, where when the power is out or you won't have batteries or whatever, this is the thing to have. This one is made primarily from scraps. In fact, you can get almost all these pieces just from pulling other stuff apart. And there's only three major components. There's this coil, which you make yourself. There's this crystal diode, which is kind of the, the miracle of this, is what, what makes it work. And it comes from Radio Shack. It's very cheap. And then another little resistor, which you can pull out of something, or you can again buy from Radio Shack for almost nothing. Uh, the, there's a piece of plastic tubing. You can also use a hard cardboard tube. Some wire, which you can get out of an old transformer. I happen to buy this wire, but you can get it out of an old transformer. Spring clips. You don't really need the spring clips. Uh, a lot of people just use the brass screw and brass washer to hold the wires down, to give you some contact points. There's this, which is the uh, tuner. And this is nothing more than a stainless steel a big size bicycle spoke. So I've been shaped into what I need. There's a wooden bead on top to hold on to. Uh, let's see, going over this way, the diode again, the resistor, and then it goes back to the coil, and as you can see, that's it. There's no other components. So it's great for those times where you need a radio, you don't have batteries, you don't have power, and they're also just fun to play with. So anyway, let me show you how to build this, and it's a weekend project, very simple, so let's get started. Two of the main pieces I have, uh, I've got the piece of wood, which is um, 21 by 17 and a half, if I remember right, yep, 17 and a half. I'm using a, roughly a two and a half inch, I think this is actually two and a quarter inch, two and a half is supposed to be the specific, specified size. I think two and a quarter will work. Thin wall PVC tubing, seven inches long, or uh, what is that? Uh, call it 17, 17 and a half centimeters. This piece of uh, tubing that we looked at earlier, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind this with uh, wire. And we just need some enameled wire. And you can get it from, for example, like an old transformer. Use the heavier windings, not the lighter ones, but heavier windings. This is from a ballast, from a, you know, a, 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 we call it fluorescent light. This is the uh, ballast wire, so I unwound that. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use this. It's just a uh, heavy wire, heavy enameled wire I bought. I got it from Radio Shack, someplace like that. So, okay, we'll take the next step. Uh, I'm going to show you how to wind this coil. I'm going to use a small one because the big one is too hard to keep on camera. Uh, it keeps going off the edge of the camera. So, uh, it works the same for the big one. Uh, I just cut off a small piece. So what you need is you need a hole on each end of the tubing. And then you're going to start your wire in one hole and you're going to wrap it nicely. So you reach the other hole, it'll go through there. And then you'll just bend it over. You can put tape on the inside if you'd like to hold it. Uh, but let's uh, let's get to the wire. Now one of the tricks is you need to have your wire. It has to be smooth and unkinked. So see this first part? It's not very smooth, not very uh, unkinked. So we'll just put that inside the thing and get rid of it. You want to make sure your wire is smooth and unkinked. You notice I'm using the toilet tissue holder to hold the uh, spool of wire. You do not want it to come off the end uh, squiggly and spirally. Uh, you don't want the wire to be kinking. This uh, this is the most difficult. Winding this thing is the most difficult part. It's not really that hard. It does take two hands, which is uh, one of the reasons I'm using this. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself a pretty good length of wire in here, maybe six inches out of here. Just bend it over. Bend it over sharply in there. Like that. And then you want to start wrapping it nicely and it doesn't matter which way you go and the first turn is very important because it is how everything else is going to fall. If it's crooked, all the others will be crooked. So you want it to be tight and straight. And you see this gap? That gap is no good. 
So you push them together. Again, push it together. Now one trick that helps hold it together is you can put a little bit of white glue on here. I'm not going to do that because it's a little bit messy for the demonstration. It'll make things harder to see. But just put a little bit of white glue on here, spread it out as you go along. It'll help this stick to the coil. You do not want any kinks. You don't want any... Uh, one of the problems with glue is you'll get uh, you'll get little balls of glue underneath the wire and and then it will not lay out nicely and keep the wire tight. You want these these coils very tight. And that one's not beautiful. And you notice I, what I'm doing is I'm pushing it this way and I'm turning it at the same time. This is why you need both hands to get the keep the tightness on there. Again, the glue helps. Now you may ask, would this coil work for radio? And the answer is yes, it would. It would not pick up very much. It would have a very limited range of frequencies. The longer the coil, the, the greater the range of frequencies, but uh, it also is harder to tune because your tuner rod has to get longer and longer in order to sweep across here. I'll show you that what I mean. Okay, so I'll just kind of continue this off camera and then I'll show you uh, as we conclude how we finish this out. So here we're getting towards the end. This wire does have a few kinks in it which I'm pushing out as I, as I work it on here. There's our hole. Maybe four or five more turns around here. Keeping it tight. Yep, there's a kink right there. So you want to absolutely make sure there's no kinks. Beauty counts in this. Don't let go of it because this wire will come springing off of here and then you get to start over. Okay, we'll call this good here. Okay, so here's the last hole. Hold this, hold this tight. Give yourself plenty of spare. Cut it off. And the second hole we drilled right here, we're going to tuck this wire down inside there. Again, we don't want to kink it. Okay, got a little bit off. Again, the glue would help. Pull it tight, pull it tight. Don't break it, but pull it tight. Okay, and then I'm going to bend it sharply inside here so it won't come loose. Again, tape or whatever glue will help. But there's the coil, not too bad. And of course, again, uh, your coil will be six, six to seven inches long. Uh, the coil I made was, has, just has too many windings. It has 170 windings, which is ridiculous. Somewhere between 80 and 120 is, is pretty typical. But anyway, that's, uh, that's how you do it. And what you'll do is, is we'll mount that. I'll show you that with the other coil. We'll mount that. And uh, that's it. This is, again, the hardest part. So if you can do this, uh, the rest of the radio is super simple. There's one end of it. There's the other end of it. Anyway, it's close wound and I used uh, some glue. Now I got to clean the glue off and then I will spray it with uh, some clear acrylic and then the coil will be done. Most of these radios, there's just a screw from here to this bottom base piece 
and they'll put a few washers in here to space it because you do not want the coil to touch the base. Uh, I made this little block and as you can see it's kind of crude but I, I saw it into the block into the uh, uh, roughly the shape of this tube and then I chiseled it out and I use a rasp and it's fastened on the bottom with a couple of screws and then of course it's fastened right here with one screw and same on the other side. Spring clips and mount a couple over on this side for the earphone and a couple here for the uh, diode and a couple here for the antenna and ground and then we still need to find our wiper which goes from here to here. You can see on this end all that we've done is run the wire out of here and I've soldered it. You don't have to solder it but I soldered it on the clip and that will go here. So I'll put a screw in there. You can see that I've just uh, looped the wire around here and soldered it on there. Soldering is best. You don't have to do it but if you can it helps a little bit. Uh, note that the the enamel has been scraped off of the wire. That is one of the trickiest parts. You've got to get that, that brown coating here off of there until you get a nice shiny copper. It should be this color like this. You can see a little bit right there at the end of my finger. You get that enamel off of there, put it around there, solder it. If you're going to use a brass washer instead of these clips, that's okay too. Just loop the wire around one of the, the uh, washers, the brass washers and solder it on there and you cannot use stainless. I mean you, you can use stainless if you're not going to solder but stainless and solder don't get along. So I recommend brass for that reason. But you can do the same thing. You put the wire loop around here, solder it on there and then when you put the screw through there it'll uh, make good contact. Uh, the brass clip and the stainless screw and over here on this side I've got the uh, brass clip. Let's talk about this these two clips right here. Uh, these are for your earphones and how far apart should they be? Well the answer is just a little bit farther apart than your resistor. This is our resistor right here. This is a 10k ohm resistor and it just needs to go in there and get clipped. If you're using washers and screws again just the distance needs to be in there so that you can comfortably wrap the uh, ends of this, uh, of this around. So if you're using screws and washers, you may want to bring these a little bit closer so you have some space to wrap the, wrap the end around there. And the same with the diode. Exactly the same issue with the diode. Uh, make sure that you have enough distance in there that you can comfortably connect it. If you're using spring clips, you want to be just a little bit, there we go, just a little bit longer. Uh, you want the wire just a little bit outside the clips. And if you're using screws and washers, you'll want to bring them in a bit, little bit closer so you can wrap the wire around the, the uh, screw and the washer setup to hold it in there firmly. You don't have to use those spring clips I've been showing you. Another technique a lot of people use is just to screw in two brass washers. And what you'll do is you'll just run the wire that you want to connect around the, wrap it around between the two washers and when you tighten it down, it'll pinch it, it'll clamp it in there. Um, it's a little less convenient than the clips, but does work very well. It's the uh, original method of, of tightening in or uh, making connections. Now in between, the wiring that goes from here to the wiper and then over to the first clip on the uh, diode, which will be here, this is the only uh, tricky part of the wiring is it will look like this and I got a brass washer and just a piece of wire so the wire is going to go from here to there and it's going to go be screwed down right here for the wiper so it's going to look like that and the wiper is going to go on to here like that uh, what I did to make this is I just took a piece of copper wire and you can see the it's relatively simple. I made a loop on each end and soldered it. Again, you don't have to solder it. You can wrap it, but I prefer solder. I uh, soldered it to this wire, uh, to this brass washer. Soldered the wire to the brass washer. And then again, I made a loop over here. I was trying different types of loops to see which one would work. And that'll be the connection from here to here and to the wiper. Let me talk briefly about the wiper. This is what you use to select the station with. Uh, in this case, it's just a, a length of stainless steel, a heavy-duty bicycle spoke. 
and I've heated it up and put a loop in this end of it to put the screw through to hold it down. It's going to go right here in this hole. And when the screw is in place, it will push down on here and apply some pressure. And then that's used for selecting the station. On the other end, I just bent the knob up, uh, bent the wire up a little bit so I can put a knob on there uh, to help. Uh, the knob is just to uh, for your fingers because if you touch the wire while you're tuning it, it changes the tuning. So that's all there is, just a knob on the end of it. Okay, so that's the wiper. So I've got this loosely in place here. And when you go to put on the wiper, you need a washer down here, which is the one that's contacting this wire. And then you'll also need another washer on top of the screw so that when you turn this, it, it moves nicely between the washers. Uh, without these washers, it'll jam and, and try to unscrew the screw and so on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take and put this here like that. Put this in here and then uh, it screws into the board and you use this for adjusting the tension on the, on the wiper up here. And so that's how the wiper is installed. Well, this is pretty much it. Um, we've gotten, we got the wire coming out of this side of the coil, comes down here. It's, uh, in this case, it's soldered onto this clip. A resistor will go across here, and then the earphone will be connected to here. These two are just, these two clips are just screwed together. If you're using uh, washers, you would just have a screw and a few washers on it to make the connections. Diode will go here, then there's the wire here to the uh, wiper, as we showed you earlier. Wire goes over here to this contact, which will be the ground. We'll hook our ground wire here. Back here is the antenna wire. This clip will go to our antenna. And then, of course, as we showed earlier, it goes into the coil. So that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the uh, assembled piece. I'll show you some finishing pieces. We need to still remove the enamel off of this wire so that the wiper can touch it. If the radio is not going to work, it's probably because the enamel has not been removed from here or from one of these two end pieces. That's the most common error. Getting that enamel off there can be a little tricky. I'll show you that here in a second. And then we'll finish assembling and we'll go test it. To remove the uh, enamel, you got to get this enamel off of here because this has to make a good electrical contact of the coil. To get the enamel off of here, just you want to stripe across here where the uh, enamel is gone. What I did is I start out with a piece of sandpaper and I put it around my wiper like this. Like this. Like this. And what will happen is it will mark. You can see it's scratching the uh, copper, copper wire. Uh, and then what you want to do is once you've got a good mark on where it's going to touch, take your sandpaper and sand up and down this direction. You can see it shining up nicely. And work on that until the until you've got a nice clean copper strip across here. Then take a brush, toothbrush, rag or something like that, piece of tissue, and get the copper and enamel dust out of there. If you don't get the copper dust out of there, it'll short between the coils and you won't get a very good a very good uh, separation. So just clean it out with a brush. And that'll be that. When it comes to these connections here uh, to scrape the uh, copper or the enamel off the copper. Uh, I use a combination of a sharp knife like this and sandpaper. I don't use, a lot of people will burn it off. I don't like to do that. It softens the copper. So uh, just use some, uh, a sharp knife, scrape the enamel off. Get all the enamel off you can. Make sure it's shiny all the way around the wire before you make your connection. Almost forgot to mention the important parts. Uh, put your diode here. Um, don't forget that. Doesn't matter which way it goes. Usually you have to worry about which way the diode goes. In this case, not. Your resistor here. Resistor has no direction either. And then the last thing is uh, clip in your clip in your earpiece. And again, doesn't matter. Just one wire on one side, one wire on the other. I put a little extender on it, which is why the wire is a different color. But that's it. Ready to use. So this is it in use. Got an earphone over here on this side. It's connected up over here. Got a ground 
just uh, connected to the ground from here to this is an air conditioner. Um, the antenna, it's hard to see the wire, goes up here like this. It goes to this uh, insulator and then all the way out there to that other fence. And on the other fence, it's connected by, again, a, uh, a piece of string to keep it from uh, touching the metal. Just be careful not to run it near electrical lines. You notice we have got no electrical wires or anything out there. You don't want to run it across electrical wires or anywhere near electrical wires. And make sure your ground has nothing to do with electricity. It's uh, going to something like a water pipe or something. And for operation, that's pretty much it. Just uh, listen and tune. So does it really work? Well, you have a listen. <laughs>